Welcome to the Wednesday night Grumpy Sound Guy show. I am extra grumpy this week because I am sick. I'm actually sitting in front of the doctor's office waiting to go in here and uh, hopefully get some antibiotics or something to deal with this whole chest cold, head cold, upper respiratory funk that I have going on this week. So that's extra special. So someone had asked um, about when is the right time and how do you price out hiring production um, outside your band to work for your band. Um, most bands start out with some sort of their own production thing, maybe running sound from the stage or, you know, just legitimately trying to only book clubs that have in-house sound and uh which is you know there's more and more of those coming along um so that's kind of the evolution of a band as it grows as it usually does you know its own sound and its own thing i know some bands has been doing their own sound for you know 20 years you know 25 years and they're, they're happy with that and content with that and uh their fans don't seem to have a problem with it but they've also had a lot of help along the way to kind of get them where they are that way um so yeah, when do you hire, you know, what point do you make that decision to hire a production guy? Well, I mean, you have to look at that. It's just like, it's just like running a business, man, you know, and hiring employees. When you first start bringing on employees, man, it, it's hard to turn any kind of profit because you're pouring all your profit into your employees. And I'm going through this with CLP Audio right now. Um, so you have to see it as an investment. A lot of you guys are only making, you know, 800 to $1,500. You know, you're a B band. You're trying to get to the upper echelons of B, you know, band, uh, uh life and, uh, maybe low a, you know, life is what you're reaching for. If you're in this for the money, then it's going to be real hard to achieve that. Bands that I work for regularly that are uh, trying to do it that exact scenario are basically paying me out of their pocket. They're guys who have really good paying government jobs or you know IT jobs or they're a business owner of some kind or whatever, and they're not in this for the money at this stage of the game because they understand that they're, they're just... Um, you know, slowly working their way into this uh, upper next tier of where they want to be, and they realize it's gonna, it takes an investment to get there. Uh, I know a bands right now who were, who started out very mediocre and bit the bullet and paid really legit production guys to come to work for them, and it catapulted them over over about a two year period way up into the upper echelons of a life, you know, uh, a level, you know, band life. So it just kind of, it's going to sting a little, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of parameters that go into it. I, I can't, I can't really cover everything in a, in a, in this even long form video. Um, but you have to decide what is right for, for your band. Uh, a couple different options is you can go buy all the all the gear and an equipment trailer and a vehicle to pull it with and then just hire a sound guy that's dedicated just to your band uh, those guys typically make anywhere from a hundred dollars a night to you know three hundred dollars a night it really just depends on their skill level um you know and that sort of thing I am not someone who's interested in putting all my eggs in that one basket because that doesn't do me any good as a business because I'm trying to, you know, build and I have to diversify my portfolio of bands, you know, in order to make it because the only problem with being a sound engineer with one band only is if that band breaks up, then you're kind of left high and dry and you haven't taken time to cultivate, you know, other other clients you know so I, I never put all my eggs in one basket that way but you know some guys especially older guys and younger guys I see is what is the the trend that I usually see really dig that 
you know, just one band kind of thing. It's it's a lot easier because once you get the system dialed in, you're really just kind of moving the mix around from room to room to adjust for the room. Um, you know, so that makes their life pretty easy. Some bands just give their sound guy a regular cut as if they were a band member. Um, you know, that, that can or cannot be beneficial to the sound guy. But if that's what he agrees to, you know, that's entirely up to him. Uh, and, you know, a good sound guy wants to work with people that he enjoys working with, too. So there's something to be said for that. You know, um, the same thing with venues. You know, venues that are hiring full-time sound guys, you need to be a venue that, that these guys want to work at. You know, give them the right equipment to get the job done so they're not behind the eight ball even before the show starts. There's absolutely nothing worse than that, than being in a house gig where you really don't have enough equipment in place to get the job done because the bar owner kind of cheesed out on that stuff. Um, I refuse to even entertain walk-ins in rooms like that, you know. And there's a couple rooms that I mix in that have a whole bunch of gear. It's just not very good gear, and it's the bane of my existence to mix them guys. But, you know, it is what it is. So from a band's perspective, you know, that's option one. You know, go buy your own gear. You know, you make the investment you know, drop, you know, 20 or 30 grand, 40 grand into, you know, a, a, a system, lights, you know, a trailer to haul it in, a truck to pull it with. Maybe you already have a truck you can pull it with, you know, but you're going to be into a trailer for, you know, six grand probably if you buy a new one, eight grand for a dual axle, you know, six by 12 is what you could probably get away with. Um, then you're going to need at least a half ton pickup truck to pull that with. And you got all the maintenance and the upkeep on all that stuff. You're going to need to put tires on the trailer every, every year, you know, or a year and a half, something like that. Trailer tires don't last very long, especially when you're hauling a lot of weight. Um, so that's, that's, you know, option A, you know, option B is to call somebody like me and hire me to come and bring all that gear to your gig. You know, uh, I'm the one that's licensed, insured, you know, taking responsibility for all the gear maintenance, the trailer, the truck, the whole nine yards. And you're, you know, you're, you're paying me to take care of it for you. So that's going to be obviously, you know, I, I say it's going to be more expensive, you know, per gig. But when you figure all the gear you're going to have to buy to do it yourself with option, you know, one option A, you know, um, you're really not saving any money by buying your own gear, you know? If you really want the honest to God truth, the road of least resistance is just to hire someone like me. I'm not just saying that because I'm for hire. I'm saying that because I've been in bands where we carry two sound systems. I used to carry two drum sets, a small drum set and a big drum set, same deal, small sound system, big sound system, depending on the size of the room, depending on if we were outdoors or if we were indoors and we had a big stage, we had a small stage. And I know what it, I know what it costs to do all that. And I'm a pretty damn good sound engineer and you know, still struggle to try and mix from the stage. Cause you can't mix from the stage. I don't care what anybody says. Especially if you've got in-ear monitors in. Like, you're, you're a friggin' idiot, you know? No one can mix from the stage and, and make it sound as good as a, a guy out front, you know, mixing you. Yeah, you might get it roughed in, and you might get it to a point where your, your fans don't complain about it, but is it as good as it can possibly be? Not even close. And that's coming from a guy who can mix pretty good from the stage. You know, I'm just being real about that. But if you hire somebody like me, you don't have to take on any of the liability of if a speaker falls over on somebody, you don't have to take any of the liability of having to upkeep equipment and upkeep your trailer and your truck and all the added expense that it does with that. You can buy a little midsize SUV, throw your drums or your guitar amp in that thing and go on down the road. Plus 40% of the clubs you're gonna you know, play in are probably going to have provided sound anyways, at least in the mid-Atlantic, that's kind of how it works, um, you know, in my area. So, you know, what the hell do you need, you know, what do you need all that gear for? You know, I mean, it's it's a huge investment, guys. It really is, and, and the gear is not getting cheap. You know, if you're, those numbers I threw at you earlier is if you're super frugal and buy used gear and really make things, you know, work and piece and part something together over time. If you go buy a brand new system that it takes like a single stack rig to take to do a gig, 
man, you're going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, 50, 60 grand, something like that. Because it's not just the speakers and a mixer. You need mic stands, you know, uh, a gaggle of XLR cables, you know, speak on to speak on speaker cable. All that copper wiring is crazy expensive right now. Um, I just spent $200 on four speaker cables. Four speaker cables, 200 bucks. Get used to that. Now you need cases, trunks, and racks to put all that stuff in. Those are, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars a piece sometimes. You know, dude, it's 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 a lot more than just a couple speakers and a mixer. You, you need a microphone, you know, stuff. Mics aren't cheap. Even if you go with, you know, 58s and 57s, which most people aren't gonna do, you know, they're gonna try and buy decent microphones. You know, it's 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 a lot, dude. It's a lot. It really, really is. You know, so remember that when you're calling someone like me to come do your gig and we want $700 to do your, your bar gig, especially if you're on wedge monitors, that's a whole nother sound system you're bringing out, basically. You're bringing four more speakers and another you know, you know, four-channel amp or two two-channel amps to run those. If you run all powered speakers, you know, that's all fine and good. But they tend to be a little problematic. They don't have the longevity and, you know, the life cycle that passive stuff does. So you're going to be, you know, five years into that replacing stuff there. Plus there's a, 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 you know, half a dozen buttons and things you can push on the back of it when you're trying to get set up quick that's going to cause you problems there. Or some five-year-old that, that some parent is not paying attention to at a brewery walks up to your monitor between you know, sets and turns the volume all the way up. And then when you unmute everything, feedback happens. They're like, dude, that's, you know, that's why I like all the passive stuff. But that's just me. Plus, it has more muscle, man. It just really does, you know. So, I have some powered stuff. Yeah, I use it for smaller corporate gigs and that sort of thing because they work well for that. But it's expensive, dude. I'm just telling you, man, it's so expensive. You know, and I know a lot of you guys are sitting there thinking, well, damn, man, my band's only making 1200 bucks. If I pay the sound guy $700, you know, we're a five-piece band. We're making 100 bucks a night. That, that's barely enough to even pay our, our bar tab and the, the fuel it takes to get back and forth to the gig. Yeah, how about that? How about that? That's kind of the way the cookie crumbles, you know, and you need to look at it as an investment. You need to look at it as... You know, this is something that you're investing in to make your band look and sound as, as good as it can possibly look and sound, you know, so that it presents you in a manner that it helps you build a following. It helps you come across as a professional to a, a club. Nothing communicates professionalism better than your crew rolling in, even if it's just your production guy, you know, an hour before the band gets there and it's, it's setting stuff up. It makes your band look like, man, these guys are really organized. You know, they have a crew of people working for them. And in the bar owner's mind, even if it's on a subconscious level, he feels like he's getting more bang for his buck from that band than the band that shows up 30 minutes before downbeat and throws up a couple QSC, you know, K2s and, you know, rolls with it. He's always going to feel like, wow, I'm really, you know, these guys have a staff going on here. They got production people they're paying. You know, I understand why they need to make what they need to make. And as long as you're drawing the numbers in that venue, then, you know, that, that works in your favor to be able to, you know, ask for more money. You know, plus, you know, don't you want the confidence of knowing that what you're doing all the time and the money you've invested in your own personal backline equipment and rehearsal time, don't you want that presented in the best way possible? It's going to be an investment for a while. It just really is. It's going to be an investment to hire a sound company or a sound guy to work for your band. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's no way around it. So you either spend all the money up front and pay a guy, you know, 150 to 300 dollars a night to run your sound for you, or you know, you pay six, seven hundred dollars for a guy. This is club level stuff we're talking about, you know, uh, to come out and run your run your club stuff. And then corporate stuff is going to be more money from that guy. Holiday stuff like Fourth of July, New Year's Eve, Christmas parties, you know, all that kind of stuff is all going to be bigger dollar, you know, gigs because you're making more money. So associate the production guy. Yeah, it's just the way that works. 
you know, so it's, when you have festival level stuff to do and that sort of thing, you know, that may cost you some more money as well. Those are your options. It's either or. If you're going to be in this business, you got to do it one way or the other. Uh, some of you guys already have a, a, a gaggle or a garage full of equipment just laying around. So you're able to come out and just mix from the stage. Maybe you're playing smaller clubs where that's all you need to do. Hey, man, I'm not hating on you. I get it. You make your money. You do your deal. I'm not mad at you. I understand how it works. When my band goes out, and obviously I own a whole bunch of equipment, you know, we come out, guns are blazing. I pay one of my guys to come out, you know, to run sound for us. And, you know, we're trying to practice this exact scenario. The only difference with my band and your band is I happen to own a sound company. So, you know, I can, you know, really, you know, pull some strings and, and make, make the event look and sound amazing. And that adds value to what we're trying to do, especially being that we're a new band and we're trying to get out there, you know, and trying to do our thing. But, you know, man, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot, no matter how you shake it, you know, and the prices of everything have gone through the roof to the point to where, you know, this is just the way it's got to be. Everything's expensive now. Groceries are expensive. Fuel is expensive. Vehicles are expensive. You know, clothes trailers are expensive. And God knows gear is expensive. This is December we're recording this, and we just seen our fifth price increase since September of 2020 in the AV market. Those are guys that do install and stuff like that and are buying gear regularly. I probably spend 30, 40 grand a year on gear. Just had our fifth price increase. Typically, we'd have one or two price increases every 10 years. We've had five in the last three years. So that's what we're looking at from our, 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 our end of it. So you gotta keep all that into perspective. You know, when you pick up the phone and you call a guy. Everything's expensive. I wish it wasn't. I wish I could, you know, you know, provide full production for 300 bucks a night and all of us make money but due to 300 dollars a night i'm gonna blow 80 dollars just in fuel to get back and forth to your gig you know pulling a trailer or driving my box truck or whatever it's going to take to get to your gig not counting the fact most of these clubs don't even comp you a, a cheeseburger anymore so now there's another you know 25 30 dollars for a cheeseburger fries and, and a couple sodas or something like that for me and my guys if i'm buying food for my guys oh well, that's 60 70 dollars easy and i do that regularly because i'm trying to take care of my people so you know start looking at the overhead there that doesn't even bring into account any of the gear maintenance insurance you know all the stuff uncle sam does the taxes the daylight side of us you know coming and going if I can't make money, I'm to a place in my career now where it's like, if I can't make measurable profit, and I don't mean like a $50 profit, if I can't make a measurable profit that makes it worth my while, I just say no to the gig. I just don't take it. And there's still a couple bottom feeders out there that are, that are working for those kind of prices, but it's temporary. It's only a matter of time before they figure it out that you can't make any money that way. And especially when gear starts breaking down or God forbid you have a flat tire along, you know, the Capitol Beltway at, at five o'clock in the evening on a Friday trying to get to a gig. Yeah, that's what separates the men from the boys right there. You gotta be prepared for all that stuff. Look, I love you guys. I hope this helped you out. Sorry about all the freaking cold stuff here, but I'm walking into the doctor now. I'm gonna try to get this taken care of. I love y'all. Make sure to like and subscribe to this. I should have said it earlier, but hey, you know, whatever. I'm sick. I'm on, I've got a little medicine head going on here today, so work with me. I'll see y'all next time.